Hello, and in this presentation I'm going to be looking at Lionheart by Amanda Chung. An interesting fact about this poem is that Amanda Chung was only 16 when she wrote it. Lionheart concerns the figure of the merlion in creates mythology for the emblem of Singapore and its people rising from the waves and establishing their city-state. The poem exhorts the people of Singapore to stay true to their origins and to take pride in their country. It is a regular structure in that it is arranged into six stanzas of six lines each, though it has an irregular rhythm and rhyme. You came out of the sea, skin-dappled scales of sunlight, riding crests, waves of fish in your fists. The pronoun you here might refer to the figure of the merlion in the first instance, but by extension it could also refer to the origins of all Singaporeans for whom the merlion is a symbol. The fact that the merlion emerges out of the sea, while this is significant because it ties in with an evolutionary sense of origin and shows how closely Singapore is tied to the sea for its existence and prosperity. The fact that the merlion is riding the crest of the waves, while the verb riding gives an impression of the merlion's skill and mastery over its aquatic element, riding may also imply a sense of travelling towards a destination. The effect of this image of the merlion, scales of sunlight, waves of fish in its fists, gives a sense of the merlion's gigantuan size and power. The fish might represent the bounty of the sea. Fists are associated with the sign of aggression. If we look at the use of the sibilance in, this, in these lines, skin, scales, sunlight, sea, crests, fish, fists, um, this might give us a sense of sensation of the surf surging up and down the shore and again this very strong connection with the sea. Washed up your gills snapped shut, water whipped the first breath of your lungs, your lips bud teased by morning mists. We look at the effect of sibilance allied with the hard consonant sounds in this phrase, gills snapped shut. It seems that the merlion is adapting to life on land. A combination of sibilance with these hard consonant sounds makes this sound like a sudden, painful, violent process. Look at the effect of alliteration in the phrase water whipped. The repetition of the w emphasizes the verb whipped, which has connotations of something sudden and possibly lacerating, building on the impression of the previous line. We look at the syntax and personification used in lips, your lips bud teased by morning mists. The expression lips bud adds to the impression of the merlion's senses growing and developing budding, adapting to life on land. The use of personification here might give a sense of appeal of the lips bud. The alliteration of the letter M mm, might represent the merlion's attempts to vocalize, speak here for the first time on land and possibly an expression of satisfaction, mm, morning mists. You conquered the shore, its ivory coast, your legs still rocked with memory of waves, sinews of sand run across your back. The verb conquered has connotations involved in the defeat of a foe and sense of domination. The merlion, presumably a, mari a marine animal, <coughs> has gained victory over the land and claimed ownership of it. Why an ivory coast? While well, ivory is a complex symbolic meaning, here it could refer to the purity of white sandy beaches leading to virgin territory. It could refer to the wealth and opulence represented by the natural resources on offer. Ivory is also one of the finest carving materials. It is possible reference to the merlion shaping the landscape and forming a settlement. Sibilance and lexus here and sinews of sand might mimic the sound of the sand slipping from the merlion's back as it progresses inland. Sinews imply uh, perhaps it is gaining strength. What significance might it have that the uh, legs of the merlion rock with the memory of waves? Well, although the merlion is adapting to the land, it will always be tied to the sea. Um, rocked can connote both shocking or soothing force, so the shock of a marine animal 
moving onto the land and standing on unsteady legs. But memory, the memory of the waves might represent that soothing force of rocking motion. Rising rooms of your oceanic origins, your heart thumped an animal skin drum heralding the coming of a prince. More alliteration in rising runes, what's the effect? Well, the word rune means mystery or secret in all Germanic languages, and runes have an important role in ritual and divination. The active verb rising, tied to the word runes, through alliteration, gives a sense of an event. Perhaps these runes suggest that the Merlion's emergence was predestined. The use of assonance in oceanic origins reminds us of the Merlion's tie to the sea in the set. Assonance of the letter O is often used to create a sense of wonder. The animal skin drum that heralds the coming of the prince is a metaphor. The Merlion's heartbeat here beckons others to join him and announces the arrival of Prince Sri Tri Buana, who, according to the Sariyab, Malayu, the Malay Annals, founded a settlement after seeing a strange beast upon landing on the island of Tamasic, later called Singapore, which translates as Lion City. In the jungle at mid rasping branches, trees loosened their shadows to shroud you. The prince beheld you then, a golden sheen. These rasping branches give a sense of them something dry and pleasant and calm. Prince viewing the merlion as golden sheen. Here comes the image of the golden lion. The significance of this adjective now in combination, the golden sheen that the prince beholds. Or golden conveys a sense of appeal and value on the merlion. The sheen adds to the image uh, an attractive reflection of light. The merlion seems transformed in this contrast, suggesting it was waiting to reveal its true glory to the prince. As opposed to the image in the first line, the effect of sonification of these trees loosening their shadows to shroud you, it seems that even the flora responds to the needs of the merlion. Being shrouded in shadow makes the creature seem dark and lurking and stealthy before its revelation to the prince. Your eyes to flicker's emerald blaze, you settle back on fluent haunches, the squall of beast, your roar, your call. This emerald blaze is the brilliancy of the gaze of the merlion. Blaze indicates a ferocity and a potential of destructive power. Emerald, the sense of value and worth. The effect of the description of the merlion settling back on fluent haunches well, this indicates the fact that the merlion has settled in the place that it becomes Singapore, although this seems at odd with fluent haunches, which suggests a sense of movement. But perhaps this signifies the merlion's ability to respond to change or threat. The squall of a beast is interesting in that a squall is a sudden localized storm often at sea, but also a cry out. So the connotation here seems to give convey an almost elemental power to the merlion. Your roar, your call. The use of the personal pronoun roar, your has been repeated here. It conflates the roar of the merlion with the voice of Singaporeans. Its roar then becomes a triumphant rallying call. In crackling boats, seeds arrived wind-blown. You summoned their colours to the palm of your hand, folded them snugly into the loam. <coughs> In fact, the syntax, seeds arrived wind-blown. crackling boats, the manner of transportation is mentioned first in this first line, giving it priority and re-emphasising the importance of the sea to Singapore. The seeds arrive wind blown means the seeds seem destined uh, to arrive, and the compliance of the elements, the wind helping these valuable seeds to arrive, is also being highlighted. 
The effect of the verb summon reflects the merlin's power to command the colours here, which might refer to the flags of the ships as well as the colour of the seeds. And this idea that the seeds then are folded snugly into the loam. Loam is a fertile soil of clay and sand. And so literally speaking, this refers to the planting of seeds. Metaphorically, it refers to creating a connection between the people and the land that the merlin represents. Watch saplings swaddled in green as they sunk roots, spawned shade, and embraced the land that embraced them. The idea of the saplings being swaddled gives us an impression that the saplings are young plants. To swaddle generally refers to wrapping a baby for its comfort and protection. And so the image created, therefore, is that of new plant growth carefully tended. The effect of the sibilants, some groups spawn shade, creates a soothing effect in these lines and links together the process of humans settling the land uh, and the growth of the plant life that will sustain them. And the impression uh, given by the repeated use of the verb embrace in the last line here creates the image of the crops thriving and becoming part of the landscape and sustaining the people proclaiming the land as their own. This relationship is conveyed in this mutual embrace, which connotes a sense of security, unity, love, and affection. Centuries by the sea's pulmonary, a vain, throbbing, humming, bumboats, your trees rise as skyscrapers. The significance of this metaphor is that the sea itself transports the lifeblood of Singapore, which is its trade. The poets include an onomatopoeia, these humming bumboats, and used assonance here uh, to give us a sense, phonological effect, uh, of something of the sensation of busy shipping. Bumboats are small, boat used to ferry supplies to ship. So this throbbing, humming, Sam, the giving us that impression of the sound of a busy port. And this image of the trees transforming, rising as skyscrapers. A simile, which cleverly suggests the development from a, a rural to an urban environment. Their ankles lost in swilling water as they heave themselves higher above the mirrored surface. Well, whose ankles? This is personification. The foundations of the modern city still seem to sink into the water. The city remains rooted in the sea. The use of the verb heave connotes a great amount of effort. These buildings heaving themselves higher again is personification connotes the great effort required to develop the city. And the fact that the city sees itself in the mirrored surface, this highlights the symbiotic nature of the city and the sea. The skyscrapers of the city may strive for the sky, but it still finds itself reflected in the waters of the sea. Please check out the second video for the analysis of the rest of the poem.